the neighborhoods in Montreal are properly urban. I mean, it's blocks upon blocks upon blocks of endless storefronts and then houses on top of them, which is exactly how it's supposed to be. Hey y'all, and welcome back to Experiencing the City, where I document the sights, sounds, tastes, feels, and smells of different cities around the world. Today, we're in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. In the southwest corner of the Canadian province of Quebec, Montreal is Canada's second largest city and the largest French-speaking urban area outside of Paris itself. Anecdotally, I have always understood Montreal to be the most European-feeling city in all of North America. And in the fall of 2022, I was able to visit Montreal for the first time. And while the Quebecois city is certainly a North American metropolis, there is an undeniable French and overall European influence on the atmosphere, cuisine, and of course, the Montrealers themselves. Quebec, as a whole, is very distinctive as a Canadian province, with French being the official language, and was once a French colony known as New France, prior to its eventual conquer by the British. This aspect of the province's history, coupled with the preservation of many cathedrals, homes, and markets dating back to the 17th century, makes Montreal itself have one of the closest experiences to Europe you'll find on this side of the Atlantic. So. Let's dive in together as I bring Montreal to you by walking through the experiential elements of this eclectic, gritty, and poutine-loving city. At a first glance, Montreal looks and feels very similar to many of the major cities in the United States. The city is on a grid, and there is a central downtown with skyscrapers and many of the same restaurants and shopping chains that line the streets. However, it's the second glance in Montreal that counts. The differences from cities in the U.S. are subtle. For example, all of the signage is written in French. Distances and temperatures are measured in metrics. Pharmacy signs, like in Europe, are green, not red. Even the Starbucks signs read Café Starbucks. As you explore the city, you'll hear French being spoken far more than you will English. There is more of a French chic and stiffness in the air. These little generalizations just scratch the surface, however. To really get a sense for the Montreal experience, let's head back in time to what is perhaps the closest thing to old Europe in all of North America. Hey y'all, so I am currently walking through Old Town Montreal. This is one of the oldest still in use old towns in North America, which is pretty exciting. Um, the buildings are pretty old, a lot of stone, a lot of brick, things of that nature, and definitely a lot of tourist shops. Um, but it's a pretty cool place. I'm excited to show you around. Vieux Montreal, or Old Montreal, is one of the best preserved old towns in the New World. Winding along the edge of the city's downtown, this cobblestone covered, stone building lined strip of cafes, restaurants, markets, and boutique shops, although a bit wider and more spacious than its ancestors, transports you to the historic city centers of Europe. As you stroll around the bends of the high street, Rue St. Paul, decorative and ornate spires and domes pop out on the horizon, magnificent and bold by day regal and glowing by night. Many of the domes and steeples throughout Old Montreal, and even parts of downtown, are painted in a gleaming silver. To place yourself here imaginatively, picture the sound of your shoes hitting the cobbled stones as you stroll, the feeling of a crisp but comfortable breeze, wafts of fried food, baking bread, and an ever so subtle hint of maple syrup, and an ambiance filled with chatter, people strolling, and a series of church bells on the hour. The boutiques, shops, and the magnificently domed Bon Secours Market are chock full of Canadian pride. A common product unites not only each of these boutiques and shops, but Canadians as a whole. Maple syrup. In fact, most of these shops even carry maple syrup scented candles, and it took a lot of willpower by me not to buy each variation. Away from the sea of grey and brown in Ville Montreal and along the St. Lawrence River, is Montreal's Villeport, or Old Port. This sprawling waterfront park and promenade is dominated by a towering Ferris wheel, providing scenic views of the downtown skyline, Mount Royal itself, and the cascading river below. A festive market sits at the base of the wheel, along with adventurous outdoor activities, including a ropes course and zip line. Along the water's edge is a promenade lined by swaying willow trees and a glowing white bell tower, paying homage to Canadian sailors in the War of 1812. As you imagine yourself along this riverfront promenade, you should imagine the sound of rushing water from the immense and wide St. Lawrence River and the smell of fresh river water carried by the crisp, fresh air that surrounds you. Between Old Town and the peak of Mount Royal is Montreal's bustling, gritty, and colorful downtown. This part of the city, 
like Old Montreal, is incredibly clean and feels remarkably safe for such a large urban area. The urban canyons are lined with glimmering, modern skyscrapers, ornate and decorative 18th and 19th century brick and stone storefronts, grand historic churches, and stretches of beautiful urban parks full of trees and string lights. Throughout downtown, you'll find streets draped in lights, a layered blend of modern buildings mixed with Gothic and Baroque Revival architecture, and a skyline dotted with bronze domes, arches, and skyscrapers. Walking through the urban canyons, you'll find the bustling sounds of auto traffic, briskly moving pedestrians, music from the vibrant storefronts, restaurants, and cars, and the clatter of skateboarders in one of the seemingly infinite nearby parks. Strangely, despite being quite far inland, the sounds of seagulls occasionally accompany the soundscape. Wafts of fried foods, concrete, cigarette smoke, and fresh baguettes seem to permeate the air. In the heart of the downtown area, just outside the old town, sits the Notre Dame Basilica. This cathedral was one of the first examples of Gothic Revival architecture in North America, and towers over a vibrant public square, much like its sibling of the same name in Paris. From the outside, the cathedral is magnificent, but it's the navy blue, gold, and mahogany columned interior that steals the show. The nave and pulpit of Notre Dame Basilica rivals many of the grand cathedrals in Europe in its splendor, and its deeper, darker color palette is a refreshing change from the vast expanses of stone in Europe's older cathedrals. Near the basilica, Montreal's Chinatown is an authentic and proper one, with several blocks lined with local markets, restaurants, tea rooms, and boutiques. Multiple traditional friendship arches mark the entryways into the pedestrian-only strips, where the sounds of bustling crowds and a guy playing a santour fill the air, complemented by the smell of Chinese cafes and restaurants lining the streets. On the edge of downtown sits the prestigious and beautiful McGill University, perched on the hillside of Mount Royal Park. The lush, pedestrian-oriented, grassy park-like campus is tree-lined and swarmed with students whose passing conversations are spoken in both French and English. Beautiful, Baroque, and Chateau-inspired architecture blankets the core of the campus with a gorgeous overlook of the glimmering downtown skyline, juxtaposed with bronze domes and elegant steeple spires. Montreal can get pretty frigid during the winters, so to counterbalance this, they've actually created an underground city that is connected by a bunch of tunnels and metro stations. So this is definitely an easy way to avoid the freezing winter air um, or the brutally hot summer air, if you consider anything in Montreal brutally hot anyway. So let's check it out. Conceptually, the underground city is meant to be a place that connects the downtown core underground via tunnels lined with restaurants, cafes, and indoor markets. I found that it sounds much more exciting than it is. This is pretty much just a large network of tunnels between metro stations and office buildings. It's a useful concept for sure, but it isn't exactly a hidden underground metropolis. At 764 feet tall, Mount Royal prominently rises above the city in a regal fashion. The park surrounding the wooded peaks is filled with trails, creeks, and a winding series of wooden stairs that lead to the top. After a sweat-inducing hike up these stairs sits a gorgeous, hammer-beamed observatory called the Mount Royal Chalet. On the terrace sits a full panorama of the city's downtown, where you can see just how many skyscrapers and high-rises there really are. As you gaze across the massive expanse that is the island of Montreal and its surrounding suburbs, your nostrils are filled with the scent of fresh, earthy air, with the sounds of hikers, tourists, and skateboarders clattering along the stone pavers echoing around you. On the other end of the triple-peaked Mount Royal sits a mind-boggling structure that towers over the entire city. Canada's largest church, and containing one of the largest church domes in the world, St. Joseph's Oratory is a shrine and a basilica with a rather haunting and foreboding, yet beautiful allure. The cavernous nave of the basilica has a strangely modern design, feeling almost like a mixture of art deco and indigenous architecture. Although a humongous space, you can hear every sound echoing off the colossal stone walls, floors, and pillars. It smells strongly of sage. In the lower levels, the basilica almost feels like a deep cavern. Next to the crypt chapel, shrines covered in small red and green candles flicker in the otherwise dark hall, and the side chambers of exposed, wet mountainside stone show the tombs encased within them. Although beautiful to experience, there is a very somber and heavy atmosphere. Montreal as a whole feels quintessentially urban. Not New York City urban, but textbook urban. This is the most apparent in the patchwork of neighborhoods that surround Mount Royal itself. The neighborhoods in Montreal are properly urban. I mean, it's blocks upon blocks upon blocks of endless storefronts and then houses on top of them, which is exactly how it's supposed to be. 
noticeable throughout these properly urban streets is a much higher concentration of local restaurants, cafes, and stores than any other North American city I've visited. Perhaps my favorite neighborhood was La Plateau Montreal. The main strip, Rue Mount Royal, could be on a postcard. This bustling strip of boutiques, cafes, brick storefronts has a classic Main Street ambiance and is surrounded by tight, cozy, and tree-lined neighborhoods of row houses. There's just something so warm and nostalgic and classic about this area of the city. Adjacent to La Plateau Montreal and along the edge of Mount Royal is Jean Nance Park. This park is what urban neighborhood living is all about. It was absolutely alive. To visualize the experience, imagine rolling green fields, large oak trees with remnants of yellow autumn leaves, American football, soccer, and softball fields full of neighborhood athletes, families and friends grilling out, throwing the frisbee, playing sand volleyball, picnicking, riding bikes, all in the cool breeze. The cool air is filled with the sounds of sport, laughter, chatter, and distant street drums. Another park that simply blew me away was Parc La Fontaine. Reminiscent of Central Park in New York, La Fontaine is covered in golden trees, picnickers, bikers, musicians, and very, very plump squirrels. At golden hour, it's remarkably yellow. The atmosphere is filled with a fun mix between ocean birds and ducks amidst street musicians and chatter in French. The neighborhood streets throughout the city are packed with gorgeous brick and wooden row houses, most of which have French-inspired chateau-like rooflines and attic windows, with occasional turrets and domes on the corners. Many of the row houses have raw iron porch balconies. I saved the best for the last because honestly, the food in Montreal is just remarkable. Here's a look at some of the Montreal icons I was able to try. We'll start with poutine. This Quebecois staple is dense. On a large plate comes fries, thick cut mozzarella cheese curds, and grilled chicken, this topping varies, doused in a sea of gravy, which really dominates the flavor palette in a good way. The perfect bar food, my order was from Montreal Poutine in the Old Town. Next up is a smoked meat sandwich from Schwartz. Smoked meat is one of Montreal's claims to fame, and the smoked meat sandwich at Schwartz Deli was incredible. Salty, tender, and densely packed onto the sandwich, this corned beef and soft rice staple can be found in Montreal's Little Portugal neighborhood. There's a bitter rivalry between Fairmount Bagels and St. Viature Bagels. I tried mine from Fairmount, a sesame bagel, and holy cow, it was amazing. Like, absolutely insane. Thinner than its American counterparts, this bagel tasted wood-fired and was perfectly soft on the inside, with an ever-so-slight crunch. I genuinely couldn't believe how delicious it was. I am now a firm believer, by the way, of the superiority of Montreal bagels to both New Jersey and to New York. And I'm not sorry. The Walensky Classic Sandwich at Walensky's Light Lunch Shop, not far from Fairmount Bagels, is a hearty lunch classic. This small sandwich is made with five slices of salami, one slice of bologna, mustard, this is not optional, and a slice of Swiss cheese, this is optional, and a grilled, flattened brioche bun. It was really, really good. A Montreal must, hot dog steme, or steamed hot dogs, includes relish, mustard, and onions. I had mine at a restaurant called La Belle Province, although, from what I understand, the Montreal pool room just around the corner where may be a worthy contender for the best steme. We'll have to see. Ranked among many as a cannot-miss culinary staple in Montreal, Dick Ann's cheeseburgers, which are called the High Boy, taste perfectly char-grilled, with very thin patties layered in white cheese, onions, lettuce, tomato, and a sauce that very much reminded me of hot dog chili. You can actually get this at the grocery store, I found out. It's pretty cool. Outside of hockey and maple syrup, there's one thing that really makes Canadians go absolutely crazy. It's Tim Hortons. And here's the thing, I totally get it. If there's one thing I've realized that Canadians love, it is Tim Hortons coffee. So it's time for my first experience. Let's see how it goes. Coffee at Tim Hortons is easily better than Dunkin' or Starbucks. It doesn't taste nearly as acidic or burnt. Although not fair amount, the bagels here are delicious, particularly the bagel quatre fromage, four cheese. Some snack highlights from Tim Hortons included the maple-flavored Boston cream donut, which was really good, and glazed Timbits. They're donut holes, but don't call them that here. They're Timbits. You'll get chastised if you call them donut holes. Believe me. As with most of the world's cities, Montreal can't be captured in just one visit. The sights, the sounds, the smells, the feels, and the tastes that I captured in this Quebecois metropolis only scratch the surface of all there is to experience here. My hope 
is that through diving in with me as I recounted the experiential elements of my Montreal adventure, you were able to place yourself imaginatively in this chic, elegant, and quintessentially urban Canadian city in a way that makes you feel as if you walked around the cobbled streets here too. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.